a millionth the size of the gravitational force directly, that creates a southern velocity. I think it would also explain the phenomena of the, uh, of the anomalous gravitational harmonics. It turns out if they put a satellite in polar orbit, as the Earth spins under it, theoretically it should measure all the gravity field and they should be able to get all the terms. But it won't work except for the satellite that's in polar orbit. They have to put some in other orbits in order to get a gravity field that will work at all inclination angles. And I think, again, there's probably a hidden force slight, very small, that would tend to make it look like the Earth's center is downward, is a little bit lower, mm -hmm. offset from the true center. And that would complicate, it would only be apparent in the, in the gravitational harmonics if you put it several different angles. So that's my hypothesis only. Next. Uh, this one, as I said, I'm working on, I'm pretty close to having a paper ready on that one. Uh, this one I just don't become aware of, but I'm wondering if I, when, when you compact something, it spins faster. I'm wondering if the momentum direction has to be conserved. And I haven't even begun to look at that. But if it does, that could explain a kick when, when a spinning star collapses to a neutron star and to conserve the along <coughs> momentum of that, of that angular momentum. If it's already moving, it would boost that movement. Only hypothesis at this point. That's about it. OK. Thank you. The cartoon says the universe before the Big Bang, actual size. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to mention there's a book called Privileged Physics that I don't know how many of you buy the hypothesis, but he claims the position of the Earth. The authors claim the position of the Earth where it's located in the galaxy and a whole bunch of things combined are there to make science easy for humans and that God designed it that way. All right? I, I don't know about that, but boy, when I look at the way the speed of light looks like it's C on the Earth and all the things that have to work together to make that happen, I think it was probably designed by God for ease of scientific learning. Okay. That's it. We've got a few minutes for questions. If you would be so good, please come up front so we use this microphone where we record your questions. So anyone, got, we got about we got a few minutes for Ron Hatch. No? Oh, well, hey, okay, hey, hey, hey. Um, Ron, that's uh, a lot of information I was not able to take notes. And so I'm wondering, uh, is this um, uh, presentation you gave us uh, on accessible? Uh, I believe it'll be accessible through the NPA. This is being recorded, yes. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, no, I mean, oh, and I mean the slides. Okay. Yeah, we can post it on the on the, his profile. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, that, that that's good. Then uh, other questions will come out of reading those. Okay. Any other questions? Oh yeah! Wait! 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 Yeah. If your uh, premise at the end or conclusion designed by God for the ease of scientific learning is true, why is it that your presentation is not that easy to understand? <laughs> <laughs> because I'm trying to search out the underlying stuff to make it easy. In other words, Maxwell's equations actually are a little tough for a lot of people, but at least they don't have to deal with the velocity Earth's velocity of, of what, 326 kilometers per second with respect to the cosmic background radiation. Yes. Ron, I know the author of that book. Yeah, do you? Yeah. Oh, yes. 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 Yes.
that, and when you look at the equations, I think that explains why some large gravitational phenomena, like earthquakes, are sometimes accompanied. Shaking Earth would create a, an electric field, and you, you see that. And, and I think in the case of uh, one of Jupiter's moons, one fought orbiting around the other, and you get electric discharge between them, that I think could be explained. The magnetic field of the Earth I looked at at one point in time, and it seems to be influenced by the moon with the spin underneath it. So there's, I think, quite a bit of evidence to show just the opposite, that the electric field is kind of a derivative of the, of the gravity field. Uh, I read many years ago the famous uh, uh, article you wrote concerning the Sanya correction. Noticed briefly a brief reference to a 2010 paper where you're attempting to establish a GPS coordinated for the you know, solar system. Um, since, and correct me if I'm wrong, but wasn't it your the, the really radical aspect of that earlier paper was that you said that the the reference that the receiver could be moved around as much as possible? Well, how can we actually trust any any shift of that frame to the solar barycenter if we don't have a receiver there to verify that our I'm not sure I know how to answer your question, but, <laughs> no, but you I, think, I think the measurements, what I'm claiming in the paper is that the very same measurements, if you adjust them for motion and for gravitational potential, and for the salary transformation, you will wind up being able to use them in the solar frame. Okay, I'll okay. talk to you too, yeah, okay. okay, thank you. <laughs> Okay. Ron, a uh, couple questions, uh, or one comment is that I think this, when you said that you don't see any interaction between uh, gravity and light, uh, you said that, right? Oh, or not, not? Not quick, there's no direct action. Direct action. Uh, this, it causes the speed of light to slow mm -hmm. and wavelengths to decrease. Frequency stays the same. But that change with frequency, or change with speed, this will cause it to curve. Mm -hmm as if it's being attracted, but it's not being attracted was the point I'm trying to make. Okay. And the other one is, is you're obviously working in a field, um, you're very well known for making the cock, I mean, your job is to make this more accurate and more accurate. Obviously, I can see from your talk how GPS constantly seems to be trying to find another almost anomalous thing to try to make it more accurate. Now, you, you being, I guess you're somewhat isolated in the sense that your colleagues are not uh, out there saying that Einstein's wrong and <laughs> things like that. Um, I, they don't care. Yeah, I mean, they don't, I guess the people in we, Vest don't care if you're making a bet. But how do you, how is that working in your well, world? Well, it, to, some, to some extent, uh, because I've contributed in other areas, people tend to take my word a little more than a for example, Brad Parkinson liked my gravity paper, sent it on to this relativist, and uh, you know he wouldn't have done that for an average person, probably. So, so the founder, fundamentally of GPS, uh, is open to my ideas a little bit. Now he's not a relative. He's not a. <laughs> he's an engineer. He has his limits. Any other questions, uh, Russ? <laughs> I wondered if you can answer um, the original uh, eclipse, solar eclipse 1919, that supposedly Eddington said this proved relativity was true. Uh, I understand the research I've done shows that either it was totally inconclusive or, in fact, it proved just the opposite. I, I have read uh, analysis of it saying that uh, the data certainly was not conclusive at all. I don't, and, and that's, people tend to try to prove the existing, what's the right word, uh, paradigm, uh, and, and that's what I think they were doing. On the other hand, I do believe, for example, the uh, Shapiro uh, movement, measurement of the slowing of the speed of light as it comes next to the sun. Uh, some people have claimed ions would slow it enough. I don't believe that because it fits a pattern perfectly of the square of the speed of light, the scale factor squared, affecting the speed of light as a gravitational field. So I believe that happens. And that is enough to cause the total bending that uh, Einstein predicted, but, uh, but not due to the fact that the light is attracted by gravity. It's due to the fact that the speed. And it's often said that uh, the Shapiro phenomena 
was not foreseen by Einstein. So 